Nature designed them for catching and eating other fish. These super predators have often been called mini sharks. They're tiger muskies, and unlike sharks, are a welcome addition to New Mexico fisheries like Blue Water Lake. They were introduced to Blue Water and came out of lakes in 2003 when it became obvious to the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish that non-game fish like goldfish and white suckers were competing with the lake's game fish for the food supply. Originally planted as tiny one-inch fingerlings, these super predators have grown to an average length of three feet and weighing an average of 11 pounds using the goldfish and white suckers as their main food supply. We always had a problem with uh, white suckers overpopulating from time to time. Ever since this lake was, uh, was uh, impounded, or the reservoir was impounded, but uh, about 2000 we found some goldfish too, and their population uh, took off in about two years and completely uh, enveloped the lake. So then we had suckers and goldfish as overpopulating uh, problems and it was unpopular with anglers. It was kind of an aesthetic deal. And it's a, it's a competition for our uh, game fish too, for food resources in space. Our options were few. Um, you basically can either drain the, drain the reservoir, poison the reservoir, which isn't really an option anymore these days, or uh, uh, stock an ag a predator, and I mean an aggressive predator. Tiger muskie seemed like the best option being that they can't uh, reproduce. How well have the tiger muskies done their job? They've lived up to it and exceeded my expectations. The tiger muskies have grown faster than, than I expected. They've grown faster than the typical growth curve for western states, um, especially Colorado. Our fish were growing uh, more than a foot a year, uh, well over a foot a year. And um, the, the reason is the food resource. The food resource is not a problem. It's not scarce. The, there's, there's a, there was an abundance of fish, of, of food available when we stocked them in this lake. So there was not, they didn't have to, uh, to scrounge. Rick and his team head out about an hour after sunrise to see what this year's fall survey is netting. Today we're gonna to be doing a uh, fish survey, gill net survey, as part of our fall survey protocol. And uh, we're probably going to catch some muskies today. Today's survey is one of two they undertake each year. We follow the team as they measure, weigh, and record the tiger muskie story while moving carefully among these razor tooth predators. Out here, you better know what you're doing or you could lose a finger quite easily. So these are the canines. And if you can see the pellet going straight down there, see how they, they're along at first and they just taper down? That's a perfect holding mechanism and their tongue is even serrated like that. Their purpose in life is to eat other fish. This will be the average. There'll be some bigger and some smaller. And how does it feel to be bitten by one of these mercenaries? It hurts. <laughs> it's in looking pretty good condition. So we're going to take these to the state fair. We've never had muskies in the state, the state fair before. One of the most important parts of the survey is to find out what the muskies are feeding on. We're expecting to find many of the stomachs uh, empty. A lot of times they regurgitate whatever they ate in the net. And sometimes they're just, they just don't have much in there that we can identify. But a lot of times they'll have a, an easily identifiable fish in their stomach that, uh, that we can get. But uh, mainly it's to see how the, what they're eating and to gain a relative uh, uh, an idea about that. And you can see how, si how the relative, how, the, how si what the general size of the goldfish was compared to the size of the muskie. Rick likes what he sees, and the statistics back him up. A recent survey of the non-fish count per hour shows how well the tiger muskies are doing their job. You can see how dramatically the non-game fish population has been reduced over the years. We're really uh, pleased with the results thus far. They've, uh, they've sort of done what we hoped they would do, and now it's, it's becoming more, more of them as a as a sport fish, they put blue water on par with, uh, with any of the top musky fisheries in the, in the world. I get uh, generally eight to ten calls a year from uh, non, particularly non-residents who uh, moved here from other places and uh, go fishing for tiger muskies or muskies, isosids throughout the country and, and around the world and they, uh, they come here and I've, you know, they've, they're thrilled with the fishery here and they're hoping to foster that and keep that going. It brings a lot of satisfaction to me personally because it was, uh, it was a little bit of a, of a struggle for about two years that I, I was kind of trying to spearhead and uh, 
it, it was after all that work, it's good to see the see it pay the dividends that it did. Thanks to the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish and these aggressive predators, the non-game fish are nearly gone and sportsmen have another great New Mexico lake to catch the big one. If you'd like to try your own hand at landing one of these pint-sized sharks of the fresh water, take the Pruitt exit and follow the signs to the state park.